Hi everyone, thanks for coming to listen to this talk. The Australian Apollo service brings together the genome curation and visualization software Apollo, along with system administration, data hosting and support to the Australian research community. The service has come about because of a national consultation with a wide group of researchers undertaking genome annotation in Australia. Today, I'm gonna to talk you through some of the features of the Apollo service and also how we got the service developed. So what is Apollo? Apollo was developed in the early 2000s as a standalone desktop application um, through a joint collaboration between the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute and the University of California, Berkeley. In 2010, it was upgraded to run in a web browser. This really allowed for real-time collaborations in research at an international level to occur. And the upgrade really broadened the study of a wide variety of species to improve their genomic features. A number of international research groups and organizations have benefited from the Apollo software as it supports large dispersed projects to work. One example of this is the vertebrate genome project, which has the goal to sequence all genomes, vertebrate genomes globally. When looking at the Apollo software in a web browser, there are two panels, the genome editing panel, which provides an interactive area for tweaking or curating um, your automatically produced annotations with collaborators if you have them. In the administration panel is where you can upload your evidence files and also your organisms and add or, add or remove users to your organism. One example of an international collaboration was the curation of more than 33,000 gene loci on the kiwi fruit genome by 93 annotators, which provided researchers with an opportunity to correct a number of the gene models. These consultations that identified Apollo were conducted through the Australian Biocommons, which has been established to support biological life science researchers through the provision of bioinformatics and bioscience data infrastructure at a national scale. One of the BioCommons missions is to build a software and expertise capability that will reduce the, in, the duplication of infrastructure management. Our goal in community engagement is to understand the researchers' challenges when it comes to digital infrastructure and to facilitate life scientists spending more time performing research and less time on computational infrastructure management. To effectively understand researcher challenges and possible solutions, we have developed a five-step engagement process. In the first step, we identify communities of researchers that had known infrastructure challenges, largely defined by a biological method or technique in the life sciences field, such as de novo genome assembly, genome annotation, microbiome analysis, or proteomics, and others. The second, second step in the process is to research and review what defines each community challenges or what challenges define their community and identify the common tools and methods used to undertake their technique. The third step is where we survey and discuss with the community their roadblocks and challenges and also some of the six suggestions for solutions. In the fourth step, we document these issues and challenges and formalize them into an infrastructure roadmap. This details the community problems while also defining the potential solutions and deployments to resolve the challenges. This draft document is then shared with infrastructure providers, national and international experts, along with the community of practitioners to view, to review prior to finalization and essentially endorsement of that broader community. In, a, in the final step of the process, we identify solutions described in the roadmap that can be deployed for each community. These are established and deployed in an iterative process with hosting partner organizations first identified and then the deployment with collaborative testing and feedback from members of each community. Our Apollo service is an example of one deployment that benefits primarily the genome annotation community. Many researchers from the group we consulted who undertook genome annotation work identified the need for mechanisms to easily share their genomes with collaborators and also publicly, to improve genomes through manual curation annotation with the option for collaborative curation, and they needed it to be easily accessible with a well-resourced working data storage, and there was a strong desire to not have to set up and manage the system. 
The software Apollo provides users with the ability to collaboratively improve genome annotations that are the product of automated annotation tools and pipelines, but it has an overhead in deploying and managing an instance which is non-trivial. We wanted to help solve this and we have worked with researchers throughout the development of the new Australian Apollo service. The deployment of the Apollo software requires a full technology stack, not a simple install like other software tools. It also requires long-term hosting of data, maintenance and updates and security. Following the identification of Apollo as the solution to be deployed as a service, we needed to then identify partners, the computational resources, a deployment model, processes for instance creation and maintenance, an onboarding process including a web portal, and a training and support resource system. There were multiple infrastructure and skills required to develop the Apollo service, funding in-kind skills and computational resources for hosting the service as well. When it came to the skills required for the project, the team developing the service have a diverse skill set. Everyone on the team isn't displayed in this image, but it shows the diverse skills that we drew on to make the service. We relied on user stories captured during the engagement process to develop the service primarily, with regular meetings divided into epic sprints and showcases employing the Agile method. The Trello software provided the project management uh, mechanism to meet and discuss progress goals regularly. Epic showcases provided an opportunity to discuss project progress in broader group um, for wider feedback. As much as possible, we developed workflow process diagrams to inform steps. We also used ongoing input from multiple users, which came from a slow drip of researchers that we onboarded to test the service and our processes while throughout the development of the service. This really allowed us to change direction if needed and we observed when we observed that something wasn't working out. The deployment model that was most sustainable and practical for a national service rollout was decided as the one which has multiple virtual machines hosting under one infrastructure provider. Any principal investigator affiliated with an Australian academic institute or organisation can apply and have their own instance with data access controlled by them and the users they give access to their Apollo instance. The complete system administration, build and deployment of the instance is created for the researchers <clears throat> with support provided through a help desk and available resources. User documentation, FAQs and training events are all accessible via the Apollo portal. In addition, clear plain language terms and conditions have been developed to define roles and responsibilities of both users and the operators from the outset. The service has evolved to become more automated and secure. To sign up for an instance, a researcher can access our sign up form on the Apollo portal. User request process is automated to fresh desk with separation between the principal investigator and the project administrator or researcher in the group with technical annotation skills. The build of the instance can occur within a week before the team hands over the instance to the researchers. The researcher has control over access to their instance, data upload and public view of the genomes or data on their instance. Regular maintenance and security updates of the system are operated by the Apollo service development team. Organisms and their research groups hosted on the instances across the service are listed on the organisms page with an opportunity for researchers to provide a public view only link to their instance. This list provides a national overview of genome annotation projects. The Australian BioCommons partner, Queensland Cyber Infrastructure Foundation is offering the Apollo service and it is underpinned by computational resources at the Pawsey Supercomputing Research Centre. These efforts are supported by funding from the Queensland Government's Research Infrastructure Co-Investment Fund, BioPlatforms Australia and, and the Australian Research Data Commons. BioPlatforms Australia and the Australian Research Data Commons are, are funded by the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. The official launch of the Australian Apollo service happened last week. Um, a recording of this launch webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel 
um, in the next week or so. Uh, we are offering a training workshop on the 17th of November. You do not need an instance to attend this training. It will introduce users to the basics using the Apollo software. You can find out more about the Apollo service at apollo-portal.genome.edu.au. And if you have any questions, you can also email me. Thanks for listening.